How to eat around your workouts can be a confusing topic. While some people have strictly timed meals around their training, others claim meal timing is not important at all, as long as you hit your daily macros. Like most times, the truth is somewhere in the middle. While meal timing is perhaps less important than once believed, you can still gain significant benefits from taking into account a few basic principles. In today's video, I will walk you through the key principles when it comes to workout nutrition, so that you can properly fuel your workouts while also not doing more than necessary, because workout nutrition is a topic that many people like to complicate more than needed. We should consider your pre, intra and post-workout nutrition in this discussion. We will discuss all three phases of workout nutrition in this video and I will also show you how I personally program my workout nutrition so you have a clear idea of how it can look like in practice. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to this channel and leave me a thumbs up. Your support helps me reach more people and I would really appreciate it. And let's dive into the first topic by discussing pre-workout nutrition. As the name implies, pre-workout nutrition is intended to fuel your body before working out. With eating methods like intermittent fasting gaining popularity, it is pretty common for people now to actually eat nothing before training. But if we look into the research, it is more beneficial to train in a fed state versus a fasted state. In a 2019 study, the researchers divided two groups of people. One group consumed only water before training in the morning, while the other group had a 600 calorie breakfast. The group that had breakfast was able to put up a better performance on exercises like the squat and bench press. It seems that simply having something before training has beneficial effects for performance and it is possible that this is due to a psychological benefit because in another study it was found that when the participants were given a placebo pudding that had virtually no calories, they still experienced a performance improvement compared to drinking only water. So just the act of eating something one to two hours before your training seems to have beneficial effects. This is why I like to eat something like protein oatmeal about two hours before I train and you can find the ingredients for my protein oatmeal recipe on the screen. This provides a good mixture of carbohydrates and protein which is nice to have before training. Now, if you train early in the morning, you may not always feel like having something like oatmeal before training. Simply having a quick protein shake or protein yogurt works just fine in this case. I purposely mention protein because protein is the only macronutrient in which your daily distribution of your intake plays an important role. When it comes to carbohydrates, your body can store carbs in muscle. Your body also has fat reserves in the form of body fat. So your timing of carbs and fats is less relevant as long as you consume enough in a day because your body has readily available energy reserves. But when it comes to something like protein, out of the limited amount in your amino acid pool, the body doesn't really store protein for a later time. This is why research suggests that having anywhere between 3 to 6 protein sources per day is a good way to ensure you provide your body a consistent supply of protein. I personally like to have around 3 to 4 protein servings in a day because more than 4 protein servings per day tends to have a practical challenge. But I mention this to say that if you have a pre-workout meal, this is a good opportunity to include a protein source within that meal. Lastly, about pre-workout nutrition, if you're looking for a slight boost before training, then taking something with caffeine is also beneficial. I like to take a large cup of black coffee to get a moderate dose of caffeine and boost performance. Now, after the pre-workout period, we find ourselves within the workout period itself, also known as the intra-workout. People commonly have either a sports drink or sometimes even candy during their workout to help fuel performance. But based on the research, having intra-workout carbs is only beneficial in very specific cases. When you engage in a long run or long duration cycling, you will run out of your body's muscle glycogen stores at one point. In this case, it is beneficial to have something with fast-acting carbohydrates. But when it comes to lifting weights, having carbohydrates within your training session does not seem to improve performance. In one study, researchers investigated whether having carbohydrates in between 5 rep squat sets would improve squat performance, but no significant difference in performance was found, and this is probably because during a typical strength workout, you do not lower your muscle glycogen levels by enough to benefit from intra-workout carbs. Now, this is not to say that intra-workout carbs are bad, you can still have it, but it's not a necessity for optimal performance. An exception of this would be if you have long circuit type workouts that last 90 plus minutes, or you are an athlete that has to do another workout a few hours after your current session. Another intra-workout that's often used by many people is BCAAs. The BCAA supplement contains three essential amino acids. These same amino acids can also be found in your typical protein sources like beef, chicken and whey protein. So if you consume enough protein in a day, your body will already have enough BCAAs from your diet to recover properly and have good performance. So taking additional BCAAs within your workout is not needed as well. 
especially if you had a pre-workout meal that contained protein, you already consumed BCAAs. Pretty much the focus during your intra-workout period should be to stay hydrated. We know from research that just 2% water loss can result in significant performance impairment. So making sure you keep a water bottle at hand while training is the only intra-workout most people need. So now we are in the post-workout period. And first things first, now you have to run to your protein shake and consume it within two minutes after your last set. Sounds ridiculous, right? But back in the day, I really used to believe that I had to have a protein shake right after training. But luckily, we now know that that post-workout anabolic window is a lot broader than once thought. As mentioned, anywhere between three to six protein servings per day are recommended for gaining muscle. Say you are like me and you consume around three to four protein servings per day. That means that you consume protein every four to five hours of your waking day. If you had a pre-workout meal one hour before training and you train for an hour, you basically have two or three hours in which you can plan your next protein serving. So you don't have to be rigid with your post-workout meal. For most people, I would simply suggest that the post-workout meal should be simply the next meal in your day. So if you train at around 5 and you have dinner coming up at 7, then that's a nice time for you to have a post-workout meal. In this dinner, having a balanced mix of protein, carbs and fats is what I would suggest for most people. Some people claim that you shouldn't have fats in your post-workout period because fats slow down the absorption of protein and carbohydrates. Even though this is true, if your next training session is in 24 plus hours, your body has enough time to digest and absorb all of the protein and carbs that you just consumed. Since I often train later in the afternoon, a staple dinner I like to consume is noodles with vegetable mix, chicken and some cashews sprinkled over it. Just simple stuff you like eating and fills you up is what I'd suggest. So now we have discussed all three phases of workout nutrition and we went into some nitty gritty details there, but in essence there are three main principles that we should consider when it comes to proper workout nutrition. First, it is beneficial to train in a fat state. Having a pre-workout meal with at least a protein dose is what I suggest to most people. During your intra-workout, BCAAs or sports drinks are not needed for strength trainees. Focus on proper hydration during training. And lastly, your post-workout can be simply your next upcoming meal in which you have a balanced amount of carbs, fats and protein. Also, it's important to mention that your workout nutrition is just one part of the overall equation. Much more important than workout nutrition is your daily calorie and macronutrient intake. Even if you don't have anything pre-workout or decide not to eat after training because maybe you trained late, if your daily calories and macros are in check, you will still get the majority of the benefits. So see specific workout nutrition timing as details to optimize your performance. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a better idea of how proper workout nutrition looks and how you can make it work for your situation. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, leave me a thumbs up if you found the video helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video.